So I'm going to be doing some propagation and repotting of the Syngonium. Um, it's still in the original pot that it came in. Original potting soil I've had for a few months and it's pushed out this big vine. So I'm going to propagate it and uh, repot. I want to repot into this, but it might be a little too big. Otherwise I have a smaller pot over there. Maybe I'll do that. Um, so here's my kind of setup. I've got my fresh potting mix here. I use kind of a cactus potting mix with some orchid bark. Um, there's a little bit of worm castings in there, and I'll probably put a little more perlite in. Uh, I got my plant, my new pot, which you can see I like to block the drainage holes a little bit with a paper towel. Keep the dirt inside there. And then my convenient old fridge crisper uh, to kind of knock some of the old dirt into. So first propagating, got myself a little jar here full of water. I'm going to be doing water propagation of this. And I think I'm going to cut it probably right there, right after this node here. I'll leave that attached to the previous plant. So I just have our uh, kitchen shears. Um, anytime I use these, I just give them a good wash beforehand. Who knows what we used them for last or what other plants I've cut with them. So it's just a good preventative measure to always do. So let's see here. I'm just going to chop it. Here. Okay. So here's our cutting. Um, this one kind of is curling up just where it was by the window. They're all trying to get back by the window. But uh, I'm going to take this first leaf off to provide an extra node there, and I'll probably trim this little section of stem there. Because that's really kind of useless as you can see that white latex is coming out that's a that's a characteristic of this plant um, with most white latexes I just try not to get it on me it's always good to avoid they're not all bad I don't know if this one is but so here you can see there's a lot of spots where you know, maybe it was thinking about putting out some roots, so I think this will be a good, like that little nub there. This will be a good, uh, good specimen. Okay, I'm going to just snip it there and maybe right there. Not too close, but just make sure it. Um, has the tissues still attached that it needs to produce its roots. Um, I may stick this in my rooting powder. I do that with almost everything, so I'm just going to go grab that. So, just dab some of this latex off. It's really latexy. What I do is just pop it right in there. Smoosh it around, cover what needs to be covered. Maybe I'll try and get that both ends there and then stick it in the water. So, kind of self correct, I think. These guys, I'm not too worried about that. Yeah. Good to go. I might walk around, see what else I can chop off of other plants, just to throw in there so he's not all alone. Then we'll get to uh, repotting. I added a little bit more perlite in there, so you can see it's quite a bit more perlite. The orchid bark's still in there. I just want a nice, good draining soil. Um, that's basically what I use for all my plants. Succulents, anything else. 
Okay. Just gonna put on this terracotta. I don't think this is useless. It is terracotta, so it does just breathe a little naturally. I think it's weird that there's no drainage holes in it, but I'll use it for something else. I like to kind of, when I have the forethought, let the plant dry out a little more than uh, I normally would. See the roots coming through the bottom here? They look deadish, kind of floppy. Anyways, yeah, I like to let it dry out a little and that makes it a lot easier to get out and break up, break off the old soil. I like to take as much of this off as possible. I see they are kind of wrapping around here, so I'm just going to try and break that up a little bit, but I'm not going to put it in the big pot because of that. It's not out of hand. I just like to break that up so, you know, once you repot it, if you were to leave it spiraled like this, it could just keep growing like that. And if you don't break it up especially, this will just be kind of a barrier between two soil types and it'll, it'll think it's still in a smaller pot. And it'll continue to wrap around and it could eventually uh, girdle itself, which would not be good. So I'm going to continue breaking this apart. Like I said, I like to get most of it off. Just really... As, with as little aggression as possible. I don't want to totally break off all these roots. That root looks dead. My seedling fan just came on. All right, so I think that's pretty good. There we go. Yeah, it's not a very big plant, so I think this will be a good size. So I'm just gonna set this aside. Put a little dirt in the bottom. Nestle it in there. So, just have it sitting in there. It's real loose. I'm going to definitely pack it in nice and hard, and I just keep kind of shoving the soil down the sides there until I'm reasonably comfortable there aren't any air holes or anything down there. It's better to be a little more firm than not enough because any big gaping air holes down there, that'll, I mean, it'll basically be a dead zone. It'll eventually fill in, but just to get this plant established in its new pot, you want it nice and evenly filled. My soil mix is pretty chunky to start with, so it does leave enough air holes just by nature of the mix. So keep putting it in there, keep tamping it down, being pretty firm here, just pressing the whole plant down. Sometimes you can get an air bubble directly underneath where you set the plant in there because this one especially kind of was had a negative space there where the roots skipped it and then went straight to the bottom of the pot and then started curling around so there's like an air bubble. Okay, I think this is pretty good. Sometimes I like to top dress the pots with uh, like cocoa core, 
but I think this one I'll just leave like that. Kind of cleaning it off. Alright, so overall, I got the plant here. It's a little sideways. It had some sideways growth just because of where the window was positioned, so I'll probably face it in its same spot opposite. And it'll start to turn back around. I'm going to probably look through here and clip off any damaged leaves. Um, it's got a lot of new, nice little leaves. And then, like this leaf looks perfect, but it's one of the oldest leaves. There's a little bit of damage. I mean, you really don't have to cut it off unless it's totally damaged, but we'll see. So there it is. Well, this old dirt, um, I never reuse this. It's usually kind of peaty and all the dirt that plants come in kind of sucks. So I use it in my compost. I think it kind of jump starts the composting process. If you already have some soil and some microorganisms in there, that'll just get your compost uh, kicking a little bit faster and that'll be better overall than trying to reuse it and spreading disease or just using a suboptimal soil mix. forgot to mention, uh, before I put it back, I am going to water it in real well. This helps just settle it down a little. Um, helps move the dirt down, eliminate any of those um, persistent air bubbles. So I'll let this drain through, dump it out, and then put it in its new home. Syngonium likes to stay pretty moist. That doesn't mean always this moist, but you can let it dry down pretty far, but it'll uh, it'll wilt and it'll show you. But, um, okay, it's starting to drip out the bottom. Um, this will just mean I won't have to water it for a little while, and it just really helps it to uh, get started and get used to its new home. So I'm just going to let it drain through for a little and then put it away. So here's some of the cuttings and propagations I've got. Um, obviously I'm starting some seed for my outdoor garden. It looks okay. It could be better. My lighting system sucks, but whatever. So I've got a heat mat underneath this one. So I just, whatever space I have open, this will kind of get pushed out as I plant more seeds as it gets closer to winter, summer. It's winter now. Um, but it's a nice warm area. Like that's a leaf I would have cut off, but I think he might need it. It's a nice warm area that'll kind of kickstart the propagation and root formation. Here you can see this white stuff is rooting powder. I use it always. Like I said, I think I mentioned it, um, it's kind of an antibacterial type thing, so if it doesn't help it root, it at least helps it not mold as fast. And then I've got this little avocado. Um, I kind of cut some of the seed coat away. I think that'll help it go faster, but we'll see. I've never done avocado before. So that's what I've got going. I'm going to go maybe add some stuff to this little jar and see what else I can grow. I've added a couple ZZ plant cuttings here. I never propagated that, so I thought it'd be interesting. So, there you go. That's all I got going right now. And obviously, pothos.